Welcome, welcome to our Arizona News Show. I am your host, Rick McCone, with Pat McMasters and Ruby Graff with the uh, Arizona Foothills Century 21. And uh, we're waiting for Jackie. And uh, um, she's having some computer gremlins. So, hi. I never, think we lost Pat. That we. My way. Pat's there right there. There he is. So, I think I. <laughs> dropped them there somewhere. But we are again sponsored by our friends over at Red Hog Media. Whether you're doing real estate photography or, or business photography, they are the people. They have a basic package for 165, uh, 30 photos, interior and exterior magazine quality images. I mean, the quality is amazing. You guys used them last week. We, we did. It's package, fabulous. Package, the whole hog. So if you get there and you decide to book their services, Enter the discount code Rick Helps and you'll get 10% off. So we're sitting here looking again at guess what? 19,300 listings, just the same as last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that's you know much bigger number than what we were talking last year. But again, it's it's not growing because we're getting more new listings, and I'm gonna show that here real quick. And uh, so I want to take a look at some of the uh Cromford market data that we have out here. And one of the things that we're seeing right now is listings under contract are just bottom feeding here. Boink, boink, boink. They came up a little bit in, in August here when rates went down for a couple of weeks, which really shows how rate sensitive this market is. Mm -hmm. yep. They went down what, Pat, about three quarters of a point for a brief mm -hmm. period there? Yeah, about five. I'd say yeah, five eighths, give or take. Yeah. And then of course. But he's, oh, let's get back in. And then uh, um, now we know we're bouncing around the bottom. And with uh, current interest rates now, you know, and we'll go over that with Pat here in a moment. But uh, I don't see that getting any better anytime soon. And what we're seeing is active list prices um, have also kind of fallen flat, uh, which is curious because sales are so slow. I expect this to turn down and turn mm -hmm. down quickly, especially now that we're getting into, um, you know, the slow time of year, which is, you know, November and December, October can still be, is usually pretty active in real estate. Um, especially if people are trying to get ready and they've got a corporate relocation, they need to buy or sell a home, you know, October can be good, but <clears throat> new listings are just not showing up. This is each bar here is the same week last year. That makes sense. And each color is a day. So so they're showing here we're at 3,519 versus last year, 4,520. And follow that up with the lack of sales. And you can see why we've got inventory growing as, as fast as it is. And it it's sound like a broken record. People are like, oh, man, everybody's putting their houses on the market. No, they aren't. It's just that the ones that are aren't unloading them. And, and our buyer inventory is not as strong as it was. No, not at all. There's been so many buyers priced out. It's it's pretty it's pretty rough. In fact, the number that I shared the other day showed that on a national average, to buy the median price home in January, you had to make sixty thousand dollars. Now you got to make ninety thousand. And yeah, I don't know anybody that got a thirty thousand dollar raise since the first of the year. But uh, yeah. so it it get uh, it's tough tough for buyers out there. And uh, we watched uh, Jerome Powell today, had a little uh, live stream this morning and kind of looked at some stuff and I keep kicking Pat out of the show. I apologize. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's nothing personal, buddy. Um, yeah, I know. So tell me what I'm looking at here. Well, we, we saw... It's a chart. <laughs> yeah, it's a chart. Yeah. I mean, the, the five-year coupon was up nine basis points. We this was started the day minus three. And then when Powell came out, just when he made the announcement that they moved it 75 bips, it went from minus three to about minus 42. This, as you can see, is now it's coming back. Um, the 10 year treasury hit three, 361. Now it's at 351. So buy on rumor, sell on fact, basically, is what we're kind of seeing today obviously a lot of people i've had a handful of people called me yesterday or the last couple of days said we you know so lock and i saw on facebook all these lo's were freaking out saying we got a lock we got a lock 
and you know, I you can tell that they're kind of newbies because he, you know, it's if you're experienced, you kind of realize that the market, like we had talked about on this uh, on that Powell thing a little while ago, is that the Treasury market and the mortgage-backed security market trades every day, every minute of the day. So it already prices in that information that the Feds are going to do. So that it's basically an after after fact or afterthought. But now you know, the market's kind of firming up here. Here's a here is the rate rates that we have seen. This is going back once again, 2017. Um, these are rates. They went up, hit the bottom. And this has been since really we bottomed out, you know, end of 2020. It's just been a staircase climb upward. And this is where we're seeing that volatility now since about, uh, you know, April. Remember, that's where obviously March, April is when people start getting really itchy about real estate. And we saw a lot of volatility now in rates. This is we're topping out here. Um, if you segment 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 this out into periods, I think, you know, this is going to probably keep pushing up toward the next month or so, two months. And then I think beginning of next year. You know, we're going to probably see, like Barry Habib says, yeah, I think we're going to see some relief a little bit in rates. But until then, it's going to be a rough sledding the next uh, three to six months. Yeah, it's going to be interesting for me to see what kind of relief we actually get, especially after watching the Fed chairman today saying, he just kept repeating the same thing. We're going to keep going and keep going until the job is done and we want to be at 2%. They even tried asking him the question, well, what is your internal target? In other words, they were trying to goad him to say, well, we'd be happy if we saw four, but he wouldn't budge. He can say 2%. Yeah. And uh, so they tried taking him down that path, but he wouldn't go. And he kept saying the same thing. He didn't use the word pain that much this time, but he did say that we had to slow growth. Um, and so it's it's hard to, it, I'm not looking at the real estate market as distressed and this is just terrible because there's going to be some good, buying opportunities out there. And we're starting to see some of that, you know, gradually show up. We just couldn't continue at the rate that we were. Yeah. Yeah. And, right. And you mean I know you talk about the, the sustained, you mean the euphoria the last? Yeah. Yeah. We just couldn't keep, we can't keep doing that. But uh, No. But, but I mean, I think you made a good point though. You made a good point about the interest rates. So, I mean, obviously when they went from six down to say high fours, um, you know, that people were jumping back in and, that just goes to show you how interest rate sensitive the you know the first time home buyer is. I mean, and if we get a we get an opportunity where you know I, obviously you and I were talking about it. If we get um, you know a situation in the next three to six months where things soften up, but then rates do soften up here, you know, going maybe March, April, May, let's say, you're gonna see another maybe you see another push and people have to be ready for that. I think they have to be, be, I think they have to get in before that happens or be ready to go. Yeah. I think <clears throat> I really don't want to see um, this massive run back to start purchasing homes again. I want no. to see this just gradual Mark mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and let, let things adjust. Wages are trying to adjust. Um, one of the things that Powell said today, I'm not sure many people picked up on it, but he again said, um, you know, when people feel like inflation is here for the long run, they act accordingly. In other words, businesses will build in higher prices. They will increase their wages because mm -hmm. they see this sticking for a long time. And he, he, that's kind of what he called a self-fulfilling prophecy the last time he gave a talk. So it's like it's really a going to be an interesting, interesting year. And so my question to you, Ruby, is, is we... When you, you know, we're all immersed in these numbers. So, you know, we see that sales are down and that new listings are down and that list prices have come down. Mm -hmm. What what is the sentiment with sellers out there? Do you think that they have have wrapped their arms around the actual market or are they still kind of up a little higher than they need to be in their head? I think a lot of them are up a little bit higher than they need to, to be. They're, they're stuck at what they thought it was or what they saw. Um, but then our particular sellers, you know, they're coming down in price for us. They understand we're doing what we're supposed to be doing with our marketing, our outreach. Um, so since we've actually dropped our prices down to a more reasonable place with where the market is now, we're getting more activity. So that does help or it has helped. So, but we still have a couple listings that, you know, we're 
we're priced where we think they should be priced and we're not getting the activity. And again, I think that falls on location, Sun City area, um, Youngtown area. Those are just waiting for the winter visitors to come through, I think, and then we'll we'll see some activity there. Yeah, I looked at Sun Lakes this morning and they're up to 102 listings and they usually rock about 140 in, in January, February, although they haven't been anywhere near that past two years and snowbirds start showing up in November. Yeah. Uh, so that, that should help, but you also kind of wonder how many of them show up uh, to purchase. So that's, that's going to be a metric to follow. I think, um, you know, when you're looking at list pricing right now, if you have to sell, um, you know, a lot of people, even agents are still set in this mindset that you go, you go back two months. Cause I even see it on Facebook. I'm priced below the comps. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you better be. <laughs> right. I did. I was speaking with another agent yesterday that said um, one of his listings, he listed it below where they thought the market should be or where, you know, where they should price it. They marked it below. They ended up 40,000 over where they wanted to actually be with multiple offers. So that's still a good strategy to come under and still become above what they what it should be or where they we projected it should be, for example. So well, and that also shows you there's still buyers out there, and we still have a lot of uh, cash out there as well, uh, mostly mm -hmm. from um, people that are looking to retire. But the other thing is that a lot of these people looking for retire out here and bring cash still have to sell the house back home, so that'll mm -hmm. slow things down a little bit. Right. Um, yeah. Pat, what are you hearing as far as? Uh, are you getting a sense of how, you know, talking to other lending officers, how many of their clients on a percentage basis uh, just kind of got knocked out the past couple months? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't have a specific number, but I could, you know, I read, you know, social media, you can kind of get a sense. You can do your own survey by just reading different Facebook posts. I belong to, you know, loan officer groups, about three or four of them. And, um, Oh, no doubt. There's uh, several people that have gotten knocked out. And, um, but there, like I said, there's that big pool. You know, we've got the luxury of having this big pool of buyers just kind of waiting there. So what's going to trigger the, you know, values are going to come down. That's why you and I were talking about if values come down and rates come down, you know, what, where, where is that time frame the next three to six, seven months that people can like, hey, mm -hmm. I feel comfortable right now. I think that's when people are trying to find it their comfort level, but things are still way out of, you know, whack from an affordability standpoint, but a lot of people have, I mean, a lot of increasing incentives, a lot of in increasing incentives in new construction. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think that, you know, when you see rates, we just, once again, this, there's this period of time that we're just trying to settle in this from the three, three and a half mark up to six and a quarter. I mean, um, Right now, I'm pulling up rates, you know, probably six, six and an eighth. And I know the other retail, I got to believe that other retail shops, some of the bigger retail mortgage shops are probably six and a half, six and five eighths, six and three quarter range. I'm guess I don't, I don't know what Ruby, you see different lenders, obviously. I don't know what you're seeing out there for closed deals, but, um, you know, the, the retail shops are, there's definitely a lot of consolidating going on in the, in the mortgage business. That's for darn sure. I mean, a lot of them are just, I see the production and it's down across the board. Yeah. Yeah. It, but, but at the same time, I mean, there's, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's people out there shopping. I mean, I, I've got, you know, two closings on Friday and, uh, but I also see that um, I, I call open door, the new foreclosures. And somebody made a comment on the channel the other day, you, you know, you real estate guys on YouTube, you keep talking about open door. Why do they live in your head so much? And they've been a big part of our business. Mm -hmm. um, in, in their over purchasing, uh, over pricing and in now in their surge to deplete their inventory, you can't ignore them. In right. fact, they are, they're losing money on 74% of the homes they purchased in, in Phoenix. And we heard yesterday, I did that offer pad is canceling contracts and they have 400 homes on the market. Open Door has 1,500 homes. Open Door was offering a $3,500 agent bonus. Um, and one of my clients took advantage of that. He got a doctor loan for zero down. And when he goes to the 
closing table, they're going to give him a three thousand dollar check. So because wow. I credited that agent bon the agent bonus back mm -hmm. to him. Yeah. And I'll do that with any of the offer pad listings that anybody wants to look at too, because offer pad has started to put that in at a time when open door doesn't have it. So offer pads offering a decent commission on the base rate and that $3,500 uh, for agents to please show my, show my home. And I, I think it's uh it's, you know, it's good business to say, well, let's, let's, let's use this to help lower your, your closing costs. So that's kind of exciting mm -hmm. news, but I yeah. looked and, you know, they've got some pretty decent listings out there. There's only 400 of them, but uh, um, they're about 10% of our sales right now. Hmm. I don't think they're buying very many. Yeah, and I don't see no. very many signs out for them. Yeah. No, no. Are you pulling up another chart there, Mr. Pat? Or you no, I'm just uh, this. You know, I, well, I was looking on my phone for this information that, um, you yeah, know, this one LO... It talked about, you know, obviously interest rates are going up. You know, he said home buying in February, tw February 2022, obviously this year. You know, he was talking about how people had what they had to do to get under contract, pay 10 percent over the market price. They had to, you know, promise, you know, pay the difference between the list price and the, you know, the offer price, uh, limited inspections. All this stuff is out the window now. Which So if you're a buyer, I mean, you've got to you got to feel a little bit. A heck of a lot more comfortable. Maybe it's not the exact perfect time to be buying, but the environment's definitely a hell of a lot more positive. And you know, like I said, people are, you know, this is where they start reading the headlines like, oh, real estate's crashing. And um, this is where I think the true buyer has definitely gained a great advantage oh, here in the last the, six months. The buyers know it too. Yeah. I mean, you know, I listed a townhome in Tempe, Tempe and we had to, con which is good. You know, we had to give a lot of concessions. So I'm, you know, mm -hmm. the buyers are savvy and that's where I was chuckling with the, that couple that called me this week talking about, uh, you know, buying a home out of, um, on the West end there. And, and the builder was saying, real estate's going to keep going up. And the agent goes, yes, it's going to keep going up. And I said, well, he, he's living in a bubble. <laughs> it's because it's, we're seeing all these concessions by builders and concessions mm -hmm. by other buyers. I mean, and the, you know, the numbers are, and I'm not trying to be negative, but the numbers are what they are. And here's, here's closings above list pricing reached a peak of 60% of the homes out there. Now we're down to 16%. And instead yeah. of 25 to 40,000 above, look at that. We're 5,000. So, you know, that's, that's what's going on out there. So it's so much easier for buyers. And, yeah. and, you know, and sellers, you have to make repairs. So, you know, uh, you know, fix up your place before you put it on the market. And, you know, buyers are, they're digging in. No, I want that fixed. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so. Uh, well, he rattled, this guy rattled, this guy rattled off the advantage of home searching right now. I'm just going to rattle them off just to bore people to death. Home inventory, <laughs> how, home inventory. For us, the highest has been, <laughs> home inventory has been the highest has been in two years. More options. Concessions and buy downs are very common. The third one, ability not to not compete with other buyers in your on your dream home. The fourth is the ability to offer at or under list price. Full inspections and negotiations with the seller to fix items in the home. Buyers using minimum down payments, FHA, down payment assistance programs have got, you know, advantage there now too. So um, it says no one likes higher monthly payments, but waiting to buy until rates come back down at an all time historic lows does not come without a cost. Right. So, I mean, that's kind of this time frame. I think the smart buyer says, okay, you know, just be smart about it. But, um, you know, I think we're, it's, it's not at all, you know, you just have to be smart about it, which I think this is a good time frame. I'm kind of excited. Yeah. I was a uh, guy contacted me, a young guy he said he was 28 years old looking to buy his first home. And he says, what do you think? Should I wait? And I said, well, it depends. Uh, uh, what is your situation now on your rent? If you, um, if, if, if it looks like you can purchase now and it's at or below your current rent level and it improves your financial situation, then by all means do it. If it looks like it's going to cost you considerably more um, than, uh, than renting right now, there's no harm in waiting. Yeah. And I said, so I can tell you definitively that in 2023, I don't see any pricing pressure on the upside. 
I see pricing pressure on the downside. Yeah. And I said, and rates are anybody's guess they're going to be volatile. But if I was renting for like 2,200 bucks and I could buy for 2,200 bucks, I'd buy. Yeah. Right. So, and there's, there's plenty of oppor opportunities out there for you. And I also was giving some advice to a client on these open door homes and saying, you know, if it's only been listed a week, they're not going to let you lowball them. But if you wait after a week, you can come in, um, you know, 30,000 below and, and shoot it to them. And, uh, and I think I mentioned you guys last week, they've been great to work with for me. Yeah. I mean, have, have you done very many transactions with the iBuyers, Ruby? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we have. So I we've closed with the open door with offer pad and why are the other ones facing what's the purple one out there oh is that um, not knock but i think knock sold one home yeah um, um, but they, i don't remember what it is but just one with them so but the otherwise and cons that i had was um one the good news is they got a lot of staff yeah the bad news is they got a lot of staff so they, <laughs> you know you you, you don't they, get the agent yeah, you don't get the agent, and they yeah. and they they say, well, let me talk to the seller. I'm like, aren't aren't you the seller? <laughs> yeah. You know, the yeah. company's the silly. So in other words, they got to go, you know, have a conversation with the mm -hmm. other department. But they never leave me hanging. They, you know, they're very transparent about where they think my offer sits, um, yeah. and uh, they they answer the phone, they they answer emails, and communicate uh, quite well now. Um, expect. Um, you know, you got to run into some bumps where they're just overwhelmed and busy because as you know, everybody smells blood in the street. So they're shooting them all these low ball offers mm -hmm. and they're overwhelming them with, you know, you can't get $150,000 off the house. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but, but, no. But you can go out and find an agent to write that offer for you, though. And they, you know, they still have to answer those. So it's, it's an mm -hmm. interesting time that we're in. Well, folks, uh, thanks for sitting in on another adventure today. And, uh, for our millions and millions, millions of viewers and let everybody know that uh, um, we hit 900 uploads on this channel. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, I had no idea I was cranking out that much content, but, uh, and uh, I really love it when people just reach out and give me a call, and have a question. I've talked to people all over the country just this past week and it's been a lot of fun. So if you have any questions, give any of us a call. You can find our information down below. So have a great, weekend and take it easy. Take okay, care. Bye. Bye-bye.